What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to our channel. This is Chu here from Choose to Explore, where I teach you to see the world and save a dollar. So today we have a special treat for you guys because we were just in St. Lucia and had an amazing time. But today we're giving you our travel guide to St. Lucia. These things include entry, money, accommodations, transportation, things to do, and beaches, and general information. So stay tuned, you don't want to miss this, especially if you're planning on going to St. Lucia. So first thing we're going to go over is entry requirements. We actually have a whole video on this, so we're not going to spend too much time talking about what you need in order to get in and get out. But if you do want to see it linked right in the top right corner, you will see that. So it's important to keep in mind that there are certain forms that you need to fill out before getting into St. Lucia, as well as there may be a curfew. When we went, there was a curfew that we had no idea about until we landed in the airport. Now we really have to run because curfew is at 1. 12:47. We got the pictures, and now we got to be out. Woo. And something also to consider is that there are two airports. In the south, you have Hawanora, and in the north, you have George L. Charles Airport. Now, George L. Charles is not as used as Hawanora, and we flew into Hawanora when we got in there. And where you fly in is super important to realize where you're going to stay and accommodations, which is our next point here. All right, so the two main places that people may stay are Castries and Soupri, and they both have five-star luxury hotels, they have beautiful villas, they have great things to do, great beaches, um, so it depends upon what type of vibe you're looking for. So Soupri is in the south, and Soupri is a chill, more relaxed vibe, more of a local vibe that we felt. Um, a lot of people tend to stay here because of the panoramic views of the Batons. Gorgeous. Now the Batons are two mountains that rise up basically from the ocean and you can't even fathom how big they are in comparison to everything else. You can actually hike these, but we decided not to. But the Batons are um, what people think of when they think of St. Lucia. Now, in comparison, k Street is more of a party, um, a westernized vibe, a lot of the cruise ships come in that way, and there's a lot of shops and different things that are there as well. So if you're looking to turn up, k Street might be more of your vibe, or on the northern side of the island. Now, in both Soufre and k Street, they have beautiful five-star luxury resorts, where you don't even need to lift a finger, they'll do everything for you. We actually opted away from that, but still had a beautiful luxury stay. And you can actually check out the villa that we stayed in linked above. It was gorgeous, two floors, lots of space, gorgeous views. We had an infinity pool and <laughs> it was right in the heart of Soufre. So beautiful, I'd highly recommend that if you are interested as well. Also during the pandemic, the accommodations need to be COVID-19 certified. And that is super important to know, especially if you plan to stay outside of those resorts. Make sure that the Airbnb or the booking.com or wherever you decide to get your accommodations is COVID-19 certified. So next we'll go into money. So they use the ECD or East Caribbean dollar and one US dollar is equivalent to 2.7 ECDs. While we were in St. Lucia, we never went to a money exchange place. In fact, a lot of places actually took the American dollar but the rate that they give you might not be the most favorable. However, we did go to Massey Supermarket, which was located all over the country, and with them, they were able to accept our US dollar and give us change in ECD, and they had a pretty favorable rate of about 2.67 per one US dollar. So sometimes when we went there with a $100 bill, we went and bought like something like a banana, yeah. and they gave us all our money back in um, East Caribbean dollars, which is great because it's something that we needed and we got money back for it. Yeah. Now, when people think of St. Lucia, they typically think of honeymoon destinations, five-star luxury resorts, and they think expensive. And don't get me wrong, St. Lucia can be very, very expensive, but we didn't do it that way. You know us, see the world and save a dollar. So you can see that linked right above in the top right corner. Yep, we did so much and we don't think we compromised in anything. Not at all. And one way that we found that saves a lot of money ties into our next segment, which is transportation. So the tours may seem to be very expensive. However, a big part of that has to do with that you're paying for the transportation. So we rented a car through drive o And what's really important to know is that the only way you can get a rental car at the time that we got a rental car 
was to be fully vaccinated. And you have to show proof of that when you um, arrive at the rental car place. Using a rental car gave us so much freedom and flexibility and allowed us to get all around the island. Now, the island of St. Lucia is very mountainous with a lot of winding roads and curves. So once you get the rental car, driving with the rental car is a completely different story. So as Americans, it's a little bit opposite for us. So in St. Lucia, we're actually sitting in the driver's seat on the right side of the car and driving on the left side of the road. So gotta really pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> if you're not paying attention, you might catch yourself driving on the wrong side and a bunch of accidents are gonna No good, no good. Also of note, the main roads in St. Lucia are great. They're pretty paved but they are windy and mountainous. A lot of times you feel like you're driving on the edge of the curve, but beautiful views all the way around. But once you get up that main road, you are in the back country. I'm talking unpaved road. I'm talking about potholes. I'm talking about driving two or three miles an hour because you don't want to ruin your car. <laughs> And one tip that we learned from the locals is that the best way to get around St. Lucia is to use Google Maps. Google Maps. Now, a great thing that Google Maps has is that you can download the offline apps. So even if you do not have internet and you download those offline maps, you'll have access to those anywhere in the country. At any time. So also keep in mind that there is no Uber or Lyft in St. Lucia. So your main way to get around is through taxis or tours, or if you have a rental car like we did. Yes. And those tours look very, very, very expensive when you look at them. A lot of the actual entrances and the admission fees to these places are not expensive at all. Usually around $10 or less. However, a lot of the tours you see will be over $150 for an activity. And this is because they factor in transportation. So if you do have a rental car, it'll save you a ton of money and give you flexibility to do what you want when you want in St. Lucia. So there's so many things to do in St. Lucia. We were able to do a lot, but there's still so much more that we can do. So many things that we gotta plan a trip back and do so much more. Yes, absolutely. So we went to world's only drive-in volcano and took a mud bath and it was amazing. Your skin feels super soft. I would highly, highly recommend this activity. We also went to these amazing botanical gardens with flowers and plants from all over the world. Yes, they look gorgeous, but be careful. Some things are poisonous. So be sure to read. And, yes. and at the end of it, you use a beautiful waterfall at the end. So we also went to another waterfall that was absolutely gorgeous. And, and it was inexpensive to get into as well. Just be sure to get there early or before all the tour buses come. Okay. And we also got to experience the Caribbean's first outdoor floating water park, which was so much fun. Absolutely. Just check out the footage. Yeah. And we were the only ones there, which was amazing. And in the north, we went to Pigeon Island, which is one of the main attractions in St. Lucia. It is a historical landmark with beautiful views all around. When you climb all the way to the top, you can actually see Martinique far, far away if it's a clear day. So some of the things that we didn't get to do that we would want to do on our next trip back to St. Lucia include chocolate tours, water activities such as the catamarans, the jet skis, the snorkeling with fish and um, tortoises, and hiking the batons. Now, we were gonna do this, but the way that our trip and the curfew was set up, we couldn't get to doing any of these things. Now, one of my favorite things to do on vacation is going to the beach. <laughs> and we were able to see six different beaches in St. Lucia, so I loved it. We were able to go to Anne Chesney, which is tied to the Jade Mountain, and it is a beautiful beach, um, a little bit rocky, and beautiful sunsets. The next beach that we went to was Marigold Bay, and actually a scene from Dr. Doolittle was filmed here. And here they have a small intimate beach with amazing sunsets and beautiful palm trees. They even have a great drink called the Coco Loco, which I would definitely recommend. We went to Pigeon Island in the north, and this was another beautiful beach that we had to ourselves. So also at Pigeon Island, when you first drive in and park, there is an open beach that you can go, it's free to go to, but then there's also a section that's uh, that you pay 
first to get into Pigeon Island and on that side there's a more secluded beach which was absolutely amazing to go to because it was great to just have it to ourselves for the most part. We also went to Redweed Beach which is in the north and close to Pigeon Island and that is actually where Splash Island Water Park is and there's a lot of resorts that are close to that beach so it can be more on the touristy side but beautiful views nonetheless. And also at Redweed Beach, my favorite part was that the water was super blue, super clear, and it was extremely warm. My favorite. <laughs> but my favorite beach that we went to was in the south, closer to the airport, and that is Lavery Bay. This beach, at least when we went, there were not any other tourists when we were there. We met a ton of different locals, had great food, and just chilled on the beach. It was really relaxing, soft sand, and beautiful water. So last but not least was Sugar Beach. So we actually weren't able to get onto Sugar Beach because it's closed due to construction. However, you are able to go if you do take a water taxi or a water tour. Now, this beach is right in the heart of Sufri and it's in the middle of Gropatan and Petit Patan. So you have beautiful panoramic views on either side. So even though we weren't able to actually go to Sugar Beach, we were able to see it on our Tet Paul hike. And lastly, we'll talk about general information. So in the island of St. Lucia, they speak two languages, which is English and a French Creole. And this is due to this history of colonization. So they were colonized by the French and by the English on two separate occasions. So most houses have the European outlets, so it's very important that you do bring a converter. We stayed at two different places in St. Lucia. The first place had US outlets, the other place did not, so it was great that we had a converter on hand. And the best thing about traveling in St. Lucia are that the people are so nice and friendly. So there was one occasion where we were driving <laughs> and a car battery died. And yeah. it was really about eight to 10 minutes right before curfew ended. Crazy. And let me tell you, these beautiful St. Lucian people came, stayed with us past curfew, yes. jumped our car, yes. and didn't ask for anything. We even tried to give them money and they didn't want it. Like, those are amazing people and everybody that we met here were fantastic. So gracious. So lastly, we'll talk about food that we had in St. Lucia. So a couple places we went to, my favorite definitely was the roti place. That was just probably a 10 out of 10. It was a and roti and it was in the south, closer to Labrie Bay. And also in Soufre, we ate at Fido's New Venture. And this was an amazing restaurant as well. And so good. Local and inexpensive. Yes. I highly recommend if you're staying in Soufre to eat here. Also nearby Redweed Beach, we ate at Triangle, which was a sort of a buffet style location. A lot of locals recommended it to us because we said we wanted local, inexpensive food and they brought us there. But honestly, we didn't get to try as much food as we wanted to because of the curfew. So a lot of times when the curfew was at one or five o'clock or seven o'clock, we weren't able to um, go out to dinner. So we ended up cooking a lot of our meals at the local Massey supermarket. So yes. pick they up were some... located everywhere. Uh -huh. And be sure to pick up food um, before, especially if the curfew is around. So those are our tips on what you need to know before going to St. Lucia. And if you happen to have any other tips or any questions, just leave them down below in the comments. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and staying tuned with our channel. This is True here from True to Explore. Hope to see you guys on the next episode.